What's up, good people of the world? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Glenn. Uh, I'm the host of the What If Project podcast, and it's great uh, to see you here. I usually do a blog post like every week. It usually comes out on Mondays, or no, sorry, Wednesdays, uh, if I'm not as on my game as I would like to be. It's usually Thursday, sometimes Friday. How about this past week? I didn't, I didn't release one at all uh, because I sat down to type something. I had an idea in my head. I sat down to type it and uh, it just wasn't, it, it wasn't flowing <laughs> the way that I wanted to. And uh, I'm writing a book, my second book right now. And I'm about a hundred and I don't know, like 30-ish pages in. And I noticed that when I'm writing something of substance like that, whether it's a, like a, a book or it's maybe like a larger essay or when I was in school, writing papers for school, I felt like I didn't, I don't have as much creative energy to pour towards a blog post. And so it was easier for me this time around, to just flip on this camera and talk to you about this thing that I was trying to flesh out uh, in my writing. But anyway, I want to talk to you about really quick about the Bible and what the Bible is meaning for me uh, these days, because listen, you don't have to be where I am. Okay. Let's just get that on the table <laughs> right off the bat. Uh, I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm not here to tell you uh, what the Bible should or should not mean for your life. I don't really care what the Bible means for your life. You know, uh, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't affect me in any way. Um, I just want to share with you where the Bible is in my life, because maybe that will help somebody out there who's trying to figure out what to do with the Bible in their own uh, period of rethinking things or deconstructing uh, or whatever label or word that you want to throw on it. Uh, the Bible, I, I read my Bible like almost every day. And now that's that's funny because a lot of people think, I don't read my Bible. I've had people come into my DMs and say, you should read your Bible because clearly you don't read it. Uh, you should study the Bible, right? Clearly you don't study it. Uh, you don't know what the Bible says, you know, blah, 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 blah. I read the Bible almost every day. Um, I used to read it faithfully every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, now, maybe three, four, five times a week, I flip it open and I read it. Right now, I'm actually reading through the Gospel of Mark. Uh, I recently finished Matthew. I'm about three quarters of the way uh, through that that particular Gospel. But I love the Bible. I love the Bible. Uh, the Bible, it is. It, it really is my life's work. I mean, I've been studying the Bible on a personal kind of devotional level since I was in the fifth grade fourth grade when I got my very first Bible and started to obsessively read it on my own. I went to a private Christian school, so this was kind of normal behavior for a lot of the kids uh, in the school. And then I went to Bible college and I got a degree. It was a double major in youth ministry and Bible. And then I went to seminary, right? And then I pastored a church and I went back to seminary. So the Bible's always been something that I've had open pretty much every day of my life in some way, shape, or form since I was a kid. And so I love the Bible. You know, I really do say that it is my life's work. Uh, and today I still love the Bible, but I just bring to the Bible a very different uh, set of questions than I used to. So back in the day, we're talking five, maybe five, maybe like eight, nine, ten years ago, I would open up my Bible in the morning. I would sit at my desk. And I would, I would read it. And the questions I would bring to the Bible, to the text are, what does this mean for me? Right, God, what are you saying to me through this text? Uh, what is this text, what is this story telling me about, you know, about God, about the church, about the world, about my life? How is this particular story or thing in front of me, how is this helping, how should it help shape my theology and my understanding of God, right? These are the kinds of questions that I brought to the text, because even as a pastor, those are the kinds of questions you're asking the text so you can convey it to your congregation uh, on Sunday morning, whenever it is that you have your, your service, right? You want to show people, what is this text telling you about God? What is it telling you about your relationship with God, right? These are the questions I would obsess over uh, when I was in school and when, even after school, up until, like I said, eight eight, nine years ago. But nowadays, I feel like I bring a different set of questions to the text because I'll open up the Bible 
and I'll read a story. And instead of asking, what is this telling me about God or my faith, whatever, the question I ask is, why is this story so important that it has literally stood the test of time and has lasted for over 2,000 years, right? Why? Look at the story of, I don't know, let's look at the story of Noah's Ark, right? How old is that story? Who knows? Three, four, five thousand 5,000 years old, whatever it is. Why is this story? It's still here. Why can I pick off this bu this book off of my shelf in the year 2023, open it up and find this ancient story? Why has this story prevailed for so long? Or go to the New Testament. Think of Jesus, right? S spitting in some guy's eye to heal him of blindness, right? Spitting in the mud and putting it on his face. Why? <laughs> what is so important about this story? that has made it endure for all of this time. And if I allow myself to sit with that question and wonder about it and think about it, I don't know, but it just opens up my imagination so much. And I come to these different realizations, these different ideas about God and life and faith that I never would have come to had I just looked at the text and said, hmm, what is this saying to me today? So again, I love the Bible. I do. But I bring to the Bible a much different set of questions and expectations than I used to. I also don't view the Bible any longer as the inerrant word of God. Now, that's something that's gotten me in trouble <laughs> with a lot of people. But I used to open up the Bible and say, okay, this is God's, this is God's written word to me, right? One of my favorite bands when I was a kid I was burlap to cashmere. They had this song, B-I-B-L-E, uh, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, an acronym for Bible, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. And that's what I saw this book as, right? One day, Jesus is going to return or I'm going to die. One way or the other, I'm leaving this earth. And this book is God's gift to me. Basic instructions for my life before I leave this earth. This is God's inerrant and perfect, even infallible, right, word of God. Uh, everything that this book says is 100% true. Uh, it's factual, all the different things. No contradictions. Uh, it's a perfect and holy book. Nowadays, though, I don't see it like that. I think it's an inspired book. But I don't think it's any more inspired than my book is. <laughs> there's a pl <laughs> there's a plug for my book, uh, rethinking everything. Uh, it's available on Amazon. But anyway, I don't think that is any more inspired because I think that the people who wrote the books, the books within the book, I think that they were doing the very same thing that you and I are doing, and that's just trying to figure out how do I walk through this very real, visible life with a very real and invisible God. What does that look like? What does it look like to walk through life with this divine being that I can't see? Can I know this divine being? What is this divine being like? Who is this divine being? All these different things. They're trying to flesh out what it looks like to be a human being walking with a divine God who created them. And so you see throughout the Bible, all these different ideas about who God is, right? That's why you see in the Old Testament, sometimes it seems like God has is has like all these different personalities, right? Because one moment he's full of grace and kindness. The next moment he's telling Joshua to go kill everybody before they enter the promised land, right? Like, who is this God, right? One minute he's flooding the earth because he's angry. Next minute he's relenting. I shouldn't have done that. He puts a rainbow in the sky and says, I'm never going to do it again, right? Who is this God? What is this God all about? And I think that when we, when we come to the Bible with the expectation that this book is going to tell me exactly who God is, I think we're set up for failure right from the beginning. Because I think that instead of coming to the Bible with that expectation, I think it's better to come to it with the expectation of this book is not going to tell me who God is, but it's going to show me how people have imagined God to be throughout the course of history. And it's going to invite me to come and take my place in that long line of people who have done the very same thing. 
so that I can do the same thing in my life, in my conversations, in my writings, in whatever it is that I do. I can take my place in this long line of people and continue figuring out what it's like to be a human being who's walking through a very visible life, working a nine to five job, raising a family, trying to pay the mortgage, whatever, with a very real but invisible God that I cannot see. So the Bible, again, I love the Bible. I adore the Bible. It's my life's work. I have a whole stack of Bibles <laughs> behind me, and I read from them often. I also read from these Gnostic texts, right? These books that were important to people, but for whatever reason, they didn't make it into the Bible. I think they're just as fascinating as the Bible is. I love the Bible. I love the stories of the Bible. I just see the Bible very differently than I used to. And I bring to the Bible a very different set of texts or a different set of, sorry, different set of questions than I used to bring to the text. So that's it. That's what I was going to write about in my blog post this week. But I figured, hey, why not flip on the camera and talk about it since the writing wasn't going anywhere? I hope that you're well. Hope you're doing good. Uh, thank you to those of you who support the show uh, through Patreon, uh, through Substack, because you can uh, subscribe to Substack. Thank you. Thank you for believing in what we're doing. Thank you for being on the journey. Thank you for being in the lifeboat, uh, as we say at the What If Project. I'm grateful for you, uh, for your love, your encouragement, and your support. Uh, if you want to check out Patreon, go to patreon.com slash whatifproject. That's the best place to go to support the show. Also gets you entrance into a community of people. Uh, at this moment, we, we have a Discord group. Uh, all people on Patreon are invited into this Discord chat group. And uh, as I'm talking to the camera... I can see uh, notifications popping up over here uh, that people are chatting in that group. So it's people literally from all over the world. We have people from uh, Australia in there. I think somebody from Spain, UK. Uh, we have somebody from Malaysia, lots of people from the US. Uh, literally people all over the place in this group having fun, talking about life, uh, food, and, and different things they're having for dinner, uh, deep questions about God, people sharing their pain and stuff they're going through in their life and their relationships. It's a really fun place. Uh, so I'd love for you to be part of it. Patreon starts at $3 a month, goes up to whatever it is that you want to give. And even if you can't give anything, if you say, I just want community, I can't do $3 a month. I get it because I've been there where $3 a month uh, doesn't, it doesn't cut it for me. And so if that's you, just send me a message. I'd love to invite you into the group anyway. So anyway, all that to say, I'm out. Thanks for dropping by. Catch you later. Peace.